Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this investiture ceremony. My name's Mark Gower. I'm the Governor's official secretary, and I'll be uh, emceeing today. You're all very good, all nice and quiet. This is a happy occasion, so happy for you to talk, clap when the, at the appropriate times. Next thing that's going to happen is our official guests will arrive. I'll announce them so you can understand who they are. They're here to witness the Governor confer these awards today. Uh, once they've, they're in the room and, uh, and seated, I'll then um, exit the room and uh, we'll wait the arrival of His Excellency, Mr. Jersey. So just a couple more minutes. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you're able, would you please stand for the arrival of our official guests? Commissioner Russell Bowles, ASM. Commissioner Queensland Ambulance Service. Commissioner Peter Martin, APM. Commissioner Queensland Corrective Services. Mr Trevor Watts, MP, Shadow Minister for Police and Counterterrorism, Shadow Minister for Corrective Services, Member for Toowoomba North, representing the Leader of the Opposition and Shadow Minister for Trade, Mrs Deb Frecklington, MP. Acting Deputy Commissioner Shane Schleppi, APM. Acting Deputy Commissioner, Strategy, Policy and Performance, representing Commissioner Katarina Carroll, APM, Queensland Police Service. Deputy Commissioner Mark Roach, AFSM. Deputy Commissioner, Readiness and Response Services, Queensland Fire and Emergency Services, representing Acting Commissioner Michael Wozing, AFSM, Queensland Fire and Emergency Services. Mrs Sally Gregory, National Vice President, Queensland Australia Bravery Association, representing Mr Andrew Kendall, National President, Australian Bravery Association. Ladies and gentlemen, please join with me in welcoming our official guests. Thank you. Please be seated. We'll wait the arrival of His Excellency. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you're able, again, please stand for the arrival of the Governor of Queensland and Mrs. to Jersey. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Your Excellency, with your permission, I'll begin. His Excellency the Governor will present the following Australian honours and awards and bravery decorations. Awarded the Bravery Medal, Senior Constable Ian Bruce Buckmaster, Mr Charles Wayne Ingham. On the morning of the 10th of July, 1998, Queensland Police Officer Senior Constable Ian Buckmaster, then Constable, and Mr Charles Ingham, then Constable, rescued a young child from a burning car in Logan Lee, Queensland. Constables Buckmaster and Ingham were in pursuit of a stolen taxi that was being driven erratically and at high speed through the streets of Logan Lee. During the pursuit, the taxi at times mounted the footpath, cut in front of other motorists, collided with another vehicle, sped through vacant land, and drove on the wrong side of the street. One of its front tyres had deflated and was separated from the wheel rim. With the stolen taxi reaching speeds of up to 120 kilometres per hour, the pursuit was terminated. As the officers slowed their vehicle, they approached the crest in the road and saw a large flash ahead. The taxi had collided with another vehicle which had been extensively damaged and was now resting on its side with the rear of the vehicle alight. They immediately stopped their police car and quickly made their way to the damaged car, where the male driver was attempting to remove a child from the rear seat. Constable Ingham first went to the assistance of the female passenger and took her away from the car. He then went to the front of the vehicle, where Constable Buckmaster was removing the windscreen. Despite the threat of the vehicle igniting, Constable Buckmaster crawled into the vehicle while Constable Ingham held onto him for balance. He made his way to the rear 
where a three-year-old boy was in a car seat. He unbuckled the restraint and with the assistance of Constable Ingham, removed the child from the burning vehicle. Once the officers and occupants were outside of the vehicle, it, became, it quickly became engulfed in flames. By their actions, Senior Constable Buckmaster and Mr Ingham displayed considerable bravery. Awarded the Bravery Medal, Mr. Hugh Cameron McClellan, Mr. James Robert McClellan. In the early afternoon of the 9th of January 1974, brothers Hugh and James McClellan, then aged 15 and 16 years respectively, rescued two young girls at Bullcock Beach, Queensland. James and Hugh, then members of the Ithaca Life Saving Club, became aware of two young girls being swept out to sea. The brothers quickly ran along the beach to gain closer access to the girls, who were using small boogie boards. Despite not being trained for surf rescues, they entered the choppy surf and made their way in the washing machine-like conditions towards the two girls. As they reached the girls, the group was swept across the Caloundra Bar and out towards open sea. They were then dumped and pushed underwater by the cyclonic conditions, and the girls lost hold of their boogie boards. On several occasions, they were separated, forcing the brothers to relocate them in the treacherous conditions. As they made it past the last surf break, James and Hugh managed to carry one girl each on their backs and fought the currents for over an hour to bring the girls back to shore near Bribey Island. After a short rest on the beach, the boys then walked the girls back to the northern tip of Bribey Island at the Caloundra Bar. For their actions, Mrs Hugh McClellan and Mr. James McClellan displayed considerable bravery. Awarded the Australian Police Medal, Inspector Anthony David Graham. For significant service to the Queensland Police Service, notably in criminal investigations, organisational improvement, corporate management and operational planning, and for developing and fostering innovation, pursuing excellence and demonstrating dedication, professionalism and integrity while serving with distinction in a range of appointments in metropolitan, regional and remote Queensland. <laughs> Sergeant Glenn John Gunthorpe. For significant service to the Queensland Police Service, demonstrating integrity, discretion, loyalty, an outstanding commitment to duty, particularly in coordinating search and rescue operations for the Water Police, as well as leadership and professionalism in fostering successful community relationships through sporting and charity organisations. Chief Superintendent Benjamin Rowland Marcus. For significant service to the Queensland Police Service, demonstrating outstanding dedication and commitment to organisational improvement and change management, serving with distinction in a range of appointments and providing leadership and encouragement as a role model for police officers, including through undertaking professional development at the Institute of Criminology within the University of Cambridge.
Sergeant Megan Elizabeth Owens. For significant service to the Queensland Police Service, displaying leadership and professionalism and expertise in investigative practice and serving the community of Queensland with distinction in a range of appointments demonstrating commitment, skill and excellence as well as drive and tenacity in working to advance the interests of all staff. Inspector Stephen James Pine. For a significant service to the Queensland Police Service, demonstrating leadership, skill and excellence in organisational improvement and operational planning, particularly in fostering innovation in policing practice and engaging with vulnerable communities to assist at-risk youth to reach their full potential through Project Booyah. Sergeant Gina Marie Scott. For significant service to the Queensland Police Service, particularly in her role as manager of the Mount Isa Police Citizen Youth Club, leading and supervising staff, securing funding to upgrade facilities, fostering relationships between police and the community, and developing and delivering programs for Indigenous children, women and youth. Senior Sergeant Kate Marie Teasdale. For significant service to the Queensland Police Service, demonstrating expertise in operational policing, business improvement practices and strategic planning, dedication to supporting victims of crime, resourcefulness in providing service to rural and remote communities and perseverance and determination in securing improved police accommodation as leader of the QPS Housing Policy Project Team. <laughs> Senior Sergeant Melanie Ann Wilkins. For significant service to the Queensland Police Service in operational areas including General Duties, Criminal Investigation Branch, State Crime Command, Criminal Justice Commission and the Ethical Standards Command and to securing recognition of several historical cases of retired and fallen officers through dedicated management of the QPS Honours and Awards. <clears throat> Awarded the Australian Fire Service Medal, Mr. Darrell Leslie King. For exemplary leadership, diligence and service to the community in roles with the Queensland Fire and Emergency Services, including service as Chief Superintendent of Regional Operations in Readiness and Response Services Division, significantly enhancing QFES's major event and disaster management capabilities, and directing the QFES response to the Gold Coast 2018 Commonwealth Games and expanding services nationally and internationally. <laughs> 
awarded the Ambulance Service Medal, Mrs. Teresa Jane Powell, for distinguished service to the Queensland Ambulance Service and the community of Queensland in senior roles, including officer in charge, providing exemplary clinical leadership and exceptional care to the community, as well as mentoring numerous staff and working collaboratively with colleagues in Queensland Health to deliver a high standard of patient care. Mr. Brett Leonard Rogers. For distinguished service, the Queensland Ambulance Service and the community of Queensland as a critical care paramedic and educator, particularly for his role in developing, introducing and leading the innovative statewide cardiac reperfusion program, which ensures world-class cardiac care for all Queensland residents, irrespective of their distance from a major centre. Awarded the Emergency Services Medal, Mr. Lewis James Spann. For distinguished service as a stalwart volunteer of the Glasshouse Mountains Unit of the Queensland State Emergency Service, contributing to the local community through his training skills, through undertaking professional development, and through providing leadership, experience, and exceptional local knowledge in extreme and challenging mountain rescues. Mr. Scott Lincoln Walsh. For distinguished service to the Queensland State Emergency Service and to the people of Queensland, including in his role as an Emergency Management Coordinator in the Readiness and Response Services Division of the Queensland Fire and Emergency Services, willingly sharing his knowledge, skills, experience, insight and expertise through education and training and through deployment during disaster events. Awarded the Australian Corrections Medal, Mr. Peter John Henderson. <clears throat> for distinguished service to Queensland Corrective Services and to the people of Queensland, including through his roles as General Manager of Burallan Training and Correctional Centre, overseeing a unique operation which offers prisoners the maximum opportunity for positive change through education and employment and through leadership of the operational response to critical incidents. Mr. Darrell Arthur Richter. For distinguished service to the Queensland Correctional Services and to the people of Queensland, through the consistent, fair, moderate and collaborative approach adopted in various managerial and leadership roles, and through promoting the operation of the agency and establishing quality relationships with both internal and external stakeholders.
awarded the Medal of the Order of Australia in the General Division, Mr Mark Lee Gribble, for service to the community through emergency response organisations, particularly the Queensland Fire and Emergency Service, in frontline and leadership positions, and through membership of allied professional and employee associations, committees of standards of Australia, and establishing an international consultancy. Awarded the Commendation for Brave Conduct, Mr. Jamie Allen Alexander. On the afternoon of the 25th of March 2015, Mr. Jamie Alexander was involved in the rescue of a man from a submerged vehicle at Mount Sampson, Queensland. Mr. Alexander was working at a property at Mount Sampson when he heard a car engine revving loudly at an adjoining property and immediately went to investigate. A man had driven his utility into a dam and Mr Alexander saw that the front of the vehicle had sunk into three metre deep murky water. Without hesitation, Mr Alexander entered the dam, dived under the surface and made his way to the driver's door. The window was down and the driver was inside with his seatbelt on. He then attempted to release the man. <coughs> Meanwhile, emergency services were called. With the assistance of others, Mr Alexander managed to release the man and bring him to the surface. Paramedics arrived on the scene and commenced treatment of the driver. Sadly, he was not able to be revived. For his actions, Mr Alexander is commended for brave conduct. Awarded the Commendation for Brave Conduct, Ms. Catherine Ann Brock. On the morning of the 5th of July 2017, Ms. Catherine Brock intervened to stop a runaway vehicle on the Gold Coast, Queensland. Ms. Brock was working on a movie set on the, on the Gold Coast when she witnessed a small, heavy vehicle rolling towards two animals and their female handler. The vehicle was driverless and was rolling backwards, picking up speed and heading towards a female animal handler and two donkeys that were harnessed to a buggy. The donkeys and buggy were being used in making of a film. Realising the imminent danger of the situation and without concern for her own safety, Miss Brock ran into the path of the oncoming vehicle. She positioned herself between the vehicle and the animal handler and donkeys. Using all her strength, she pushed against the vehicle, thereby preventing it from hitting the woman and animals. The vehicle collided with Ms Brock, dragging her some distance before pinning her underneath. Several people were required to lift the vehicle off her and she sustained serious non-life-threatening injuries. For her actions, Ms Brock is commended for brave conduct. Awarded the Commendation for Brave Conduct, Mr Jason Peter Emony. On the morning of the 19th of November 2017, Mr Jason Emony went to the assistance of two people after a motor vehicle accident near Georgetown in Queensland. Mr Emony was travelling approximately 40 kilometres east of Georgetown when he witnessed the car and caravan travelling in front of him hit a large pothole, leave the highway and roll down an embankment. He quickly stopped his own vehicle, called emergency services and went to the embankment. He could see smoke coming from the engine of the overturned vehicle as he approached. He immediately returned to his own car, grabbed a fire extinguisher and despite the warning of other witnesses about the danger of the fire, he ran down the embankment towards the rolled car and caravan. With the presence of smoke and possible flames inside the car, he emptied the fire extinguisher in the direction of the engine and was able to douse the fire. Mr Emony then assisted the two occupants out of the vehicle and helped them to the road. 
for his actions, Mr. Amini is commended for brave conduct. Awarded the commendation for brave conduct, Mr. Ethan Lavin and Mr. Jake Orion Slattery. In the early afternoon of the 29th of December 2016, Mr. Ethan Lavin and Mr. Jake Slattery went to the assistance of a woman who was being assaulted in an apartment in Brisbane. Mr. Lavin was at home in his apartment in Upper Mount Cravat when he heard a woman screaming for help. He went onto his balcony and witnessed a woman being pushed up against the fly screen of a window in an opposite apartment. He immediately called for emergency services. Mr. Slattery also heard the woman's screams and went out onto his balcony where he saw the woman being assaulted. Mrs. Lavin and Slattery quickly left their apartments and approached the apartment where the distressed woman was located. They began to bash and kick against the door. A man opened the door and Mr. Lavin and Mrs. Slattery moved past him, climbing upstairs to the room where the woman was. On entering, they saw the injured woman hunched over and holding her abdomen. She had sustained significant blood loss. Mrs. Lavin and Slattery used a towel to try and stem the bleeding. At that point, Mr. Slattery noticed the offender standing in the corner of the room and a long kitchen knife beside him on the floor. The men quickly ushered the injured woman out of the room and closed the door. They helped the woman out of the apartment and to the main front entrance. Police and ambulance officers arrived on the scene to treat the injured woman and apprehend the offender. For their actions, Mr. Lavin and Mr. Slattery are commended for brave conduct. Awarded the commendation for brave conduct, Ms. Kayla Alexis Sweeney. On the afternoon of the 12th of January 2018, Ms. Kayla Sweeney rescued a man after an incident on a canal on the Gold Coast, Queensland. Ms. Sweeney, who was 12 years old at the time, was kayaking with her father and brother on a canal near Lay Drive on the Gold Coast. Unexpectedly, her father suffered a seizure, fell from his kayak and began to sink underwater. Without hesitation, Ms. Sweeney dived into the canal and managed to grab hold of her father and pull him to the surface. She immediately rolled him onto his back and cleared his airway. At the same time, she was able to calm her young brother and then raise the alarm for help. A short time later, emergency services arrived and Mr. Sweeney was transported to the hospital. For her actions, Ms. Sweeney is commended for brave conduct. Awarded the commendation for brave conduct, Mrs. Joanne Yeadon. Your Excellency, at the request of the recipient, details of this award have not been released. Awarded the Group Bravery Citation, Senior Constable Luke Philip Andrew, Senior Constable Michael Laurie Crawford, Senior Constable Jason Mark McGuinness. In the early hours of the 31st of March 2017, two members of the Queensland Police Service and two members of Queensland Water Police rescued several people from floodwaters at Talabudra, Queensland. At about 1.30am, two police officers performing patrols 
on Guineas Creek Road in Talabudra during the Cyclone Debbie weather event observed lights bobbing in the floodwater. They exited their vehicle and discovered a small aluminium boat stranded in the fast flowing water. The boat was inoperable with an inoperable outboard motor, contained four adults, a young child, a baby and four dogs. Two officers from the water police arrived at the scene and a local resident was able to provide life jackets, rope and tools. Two of the officers entered the fast flowing chest deep water and made their way to the boat. They encountered a lock gate and a barbed wire fence that had to be cut in order to reach the boat. The distressed children were passed from the boat to the officers who handed them over to the other two officers. These officers then assisted the children to the police vehicle. Shortly after, Swiftwater rescue personnel arrived and together with the four police officers worked to remove the remaining adults and four dogs to safety. For their actions, the recipients are recognised by the award of the Group Bravery Citation. Your Excellency, that concludes this morning's uh, awards. Could I now invite you to address the recipients and the guests? Official guests, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, welcome to Government House. Kay and I are absolutely delighted that you join us here on this very special day. I at once acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we gather, the Turrbal and Yagara peoples, and pay my respect to their elders past and present with encouragement to their young emerging leaders. The Governor of Queensland, as you'd expect, has a great many duties and privileges. One of the most important duties, and it's a privilege as well, is that of conferring Australian honours and awards at investiture ceremonies. These 30 extraordinary citizens we've seen today have all made a signal contribution to our communities. For some, it was through an act of extreme bravery. For others, it has been through a dedicated service in their chosen professions and callings. To all of them, I offer the gratitude of the state and its people. The citations we have heard reveal extraordinary service to the police, fire, ambulance, emergency and correctional services. These roles are known for selflessness and sacrifice, as the heroics of the bushfire responses have so compellingly reminded us. They are the people to whom Queenslanders look up. They are the people who keep Queenslanders safe. Our bravery recipients have also given of themselves with no thought to their own safety or security. They have instead acted solely out of concern for another or others. They put themselves in harm's way so that others may be secure. We are used to hyperbole in contemporary discourse, but it's not a stretch to say that all recipients in some way are superheroes. Today they join a very select group of people who are recipients under the Australian Honours and Bravery Awards system. This system was set up in 1975 to acknowledge citizens for deeds which benefit the nation and its people. You will, I hope, excuse my indulgence for a moment, but that year, 75, in relation to superheroes, also saw the very first collaboration between the two great companies, DC and Marvel. They came together to create their own version of the marvellous Wizard of Oz. That story is not about superhumans with superpowers. It's a story about a brave little girl and a trio of friends who together protected a community. It's noteworthy that DC and Marvel, who had the whole world of superheroes at their disposal, 
did not choose Superman or Batman or Spider-Man as their first collaboration. Instead, they chose characters with ordinary lives who did extraordinary things based on their personal strength of character and integrity. Every one of our 30 recipients today has proved themselves to be exceptional. They have all found themselves in tough and uncompromising situations, often through their vocations, and have risen to the occasion in an exemplary way. I thank them all on behalf of those who owe so much to them. We are grateful, very grateful, for all they have done. May I add also that we are grateful to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, who have come here today, the friends and families of those who are being honoured. You share in that honour because they could not have become the people they are without your support. And so please take some time after the ceremony today to reflect on what I've said in the company of those others here and to share your experiences with your fellow outstanding citizens. It is a momentous occasion. I hope you will enjoy every minute of it. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, again, if you're able, would you please stand for the departure of His Excellency. Could I invite you and Mrs. De Jersey to retire momentarily while we all organise recipients for a photo? Senior Sergeant Donna Stewart, would you mind escorting our official guests out, please? Senior Sergeant? 